time in the bazaars of Hyderabad, written by Sarojini Naidu. Now here, in the, in the bazaars of Hyderabad, it is a, a poem written from the uh, collection of poems from the volume, which was again written by Sarojini Naidu, titled The Birds of Times, which was published in 1912. Now, uh, in order to study a particular poem, or in order to understand a particular poem, first of all, we have to know uh, a little bit about the poem, then the context in which it was written, and then the message that the poets want to convey, and then the technique or the form that the poet uses to write the poem. Now, uh, about the poet, Sarojini Naidu, we all know that Sarojini Naidu is known as the Nightingale of India. She is also one of the major political figures um, who took part in the Indian freedom movement in the first half of the 20th century and also was the president of INC, that is Indian National Congress, as well as she is one of the uh, first women governor in India. Now that is all about the poet. Now next comes the context, okay, the context in which the poem was written. So I've written the Swadeshi movement here for the context because uh, this poem, it was written by Sarojini Naidu as a part of Swadeshi movement because during that Point that during that point of time, India was at the peak of national movement, Indian uh, freedom movement. And um, Sarojini Naidu wrote this poem as a, as a part of the Swadeshi movement because uh, in, order to let the, in order to let the Indians or the people know that foreign goods and merchandises or British goods and merchandises are not uh, used or are not to be used by the Indian uh, citizens. Instead of the foreign goods or merchandises, we can rather use Indian products, right? So next is the message that the uh, poet wanted to convey. And here the poet wanted to convey a message that India is very rich in tradition or in their heritage. Okay, so in order, rather than using other, other countries' products or merchandises, we, would rather, we should rather prefer to use Indian, Indian products and Indian uh, merchandises Okay, so she goes on to pictureize, to pictureize us of uh, uh, the view of uh, the visual of a bazaar where uh, all the products that are being sold there are Indian products. Now, next the technique or the form that is being used in the poem. Now, in this poem, in this poem, if you go on uh, reading, you will find out that this poem is in the form of a question and answer. Okay, like uh, the, in the form of a question and answer, where the poet asks questions to the vendors or to the sellers, and the, they and then she gets an answer as a reply. She gets answers back from the sellers. It's in a conversational form. Okay, where a question is being asked and she gets a reply back. Okay, now let's uh, move on to the poem. The poem starts as. What do you sell, O ye merchants? Richly your wares are displayed, turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade, mirrors with panels of amber, daggers with handles of jade. Now in the first uh, stanza itself, we can clearly see that the poet, she is asking questions to the sellers of what are they selling. Okay, because she can, it is clearly visible that she can see that there are uh, wares that are the goods. Wares means a goods. Okay, so wares are being displayed there. And so she asked what are the merchants selling. When the merchants replied to her question that they are selling turbans of crimson and silver. Means crimson is a very deep red color. Okay, so a very deep red colored turban with silver lining there. Okay. And then tunics of purple brocade. Tunics are clothes that are worn, the clothes are long clothes that are worn by the Indians, uh, like kurtas, so those are tunics. So tunics of purple brocade means a tunic which is uh, made of silk. All right. And then mirrors with panels of amber. Now here, amber, it is a color, it is a uh, reddish or yellowish color. The panel of the mirrors are made with amber, are made of amber. Okay, and then daggers with handles of jade. Daggers, we all know what is a dagger. It's a, it's a small uh, sword or a knife kind of thing. Mostly the knives, they use uh, those kind of daggers. Okay, so daggers with handles of jade. Okay, handles of jade. Jade is a green colored gemstone. So in the first 
in the first uh, stanza itself, it is very clear that the merchants, the wares or the goods that the merchants are selling are very expensive as far as we can uh, get it from the, from the reply that they get, the products are very expensive. Now, in the second line, uh, sorry, the second stanza, what do you weigh, all your vendors? Saffron and lentil and rice? What do you grind, all your maggots? Sandalwood, henna and spice? What do you call, all your peddlers? Chessmen and ivory dice? So, as the second stanza starts, the poet asks the vendors, Okay, vendors are uh, people who sell grocery items. Okay, so he she asks the vendors that what are they weighing? All right, and the answer that she got from the vendors is that they are weighing saffron, which are spices, and then lentils, which are uh, pulses and rice. Okay, so they are weighing these uh, spices and uh, pulses and rice. She moved on to the uh, maidens of the bazaars who were there in the bazaars, asking them what are they grinding. And uh, their answer were they were grinding sandalwood, henna, and spice. So uh, in the olden times, people usually doesn't have machines to grind things. Instead, they use a uh, uh, grain grinders or a grinder which is in the shape of a uh, stone, which is made of stone. So they were using that grinders, okay, and they were grinding sandalwood, henna, and spices. Then again, she asked the peddlers. Okay, peddlers are people who used to carry things on their head and then move around, asking for uh, selling, selling things. So she went to the peddlers and then she asked them, "What are they calling?" Because for a peddler to sell anything, they have to call the name of the product that they are selling. So, what are you sell? What are what do you call for your peddlers? Then the peddlers answered that they were calling for chessmen and ivory dice. Now chessmen and ivory dice, uh, chessmen is a chess piece, okay, chess, piece, chess pieces to the help of which we used to play chess. And uh, the dices that uh, are used to play certain indoor games, okay, and both these chessmen and the dice that are made, they are made of ivory. Ivory is a uh, uh, white colored product, white colored product, which is generally made out of the uh, tusk of the of an elephant or a uh, rhinoceros. Then, in the third pair, third stanza, it goes like, "What do you make, O ye goldsmith? Wristlet and anklet and ring, bells for the feet of blue pigeons, frail as the dragon dragonfly's wings, girdles of gold for dancers, scabbards of gold for the king." So she went on to the goldsmith. The people goldsmith are people who used to make uh, things out of gold. So she asked the goldsmith, "What are they making?" Where well, she got an answer that they are making ankles and uh, anklets and bracelets. Bracelets are those bracelets and anklets are uh, in Hindi we call it as fire. Then again, bells for the feet of blue pigeons, frail as a dragon's dragonfly wing. Now here. Uh, the poet, she uses a certain uh, poetic technique or a poetic uh, device that is called a simile, okay? And a simile is a, is a poetic device which is used, uh, which is used to compare, which is used to directly compare uh, two different things by the use of words like, such as like or as. So here, the bells of the, the bells, it is being compared to that of the uh, dragonfly's wings because it is as fragile as the dragonfly's wing. Then, uh, again, here again, one more pointed device is being used that is alliteration. All right, because alliteration is a um, pointed device that is used to repeat, that is used as a repetition of consonant sounds. For example, here the word girdles of gold for dancers. The consonant sound of G, girdles of gold, is uh, indica it indicates that they are using alliteration here. Okay? And then scabbards of gold for the king. Scabbards, scabbards are the uh, sword cast that the knights or the kings they use. Okay? A sword cast where they used to put in the swords, that cast is called as a scabbard. So they make scabbards of, uh, scabbards of gold for the king too. Okay? Now, in the fourth stanza, what do you cry, O ye fruitmen, citron, pomegranate, and plum? What do you play, O musicians, sitar, sarangi, and drum? 
What do you chant, O oh, magician? Spells for eons to come. Now here in the fourth paragraph, fourth stanza, the poet she uh, goes towards the freedmen, the musicians, and the magicians and asks them questions related to them. Like for the freedmen, she asks, "What are they calling?" There. The fruitman's answer was he was calling for citron, that is a kind of a lemon, a big uh, lemon. It's a citrus fruit. Then lemon, pomegranate, and plum. Now next, what do you play, oh musicians? She went on to ask to the musicians what are they playing. When the musicians replied that they are playing sitar, sarangi, and uh, drum. Now sitar and sarangi are uh, Indian instruments, Indian musical instruments. And uh, next to the magicians, she went and asked them what are they chanting? What are the uh, words that they are chanting? So the magician uh, tell her, tell the boy that, that they are that uh, he that they are chanting different uh, spells for the elves to come. Eon spell for eons to come means uh, some magic words that will last for a very long time. Then, in the last stanza, in the last stanza, the poet again asks, went to the flower girls, flower girls who were there in the bazaars, and asked them, "What do you weave, O oh, ye yeah, flower girls, with tassels of azure and red, crowns for the brown?" Crowns for the bro, uh, for the bro of the bridegroom, chaplets to garland his bed, sheets of white blossom, new garnet to perfume the sleep of the dead. Here in the last stanza, the poet she uh, asks the flower girls, "What are they weaving?" All right, and the flower girls reply that they are weaving clothes for the newlywed couple, and as well as uh, some certain clothes or a garland for the uh, dead people. Okay, here in the uh, last stanza, the poet, the poet, uh, she wants to convey the fact that flowers can be used in in both sad and happy occasions. That uh, flowers in the first, in the first, in the for the happy occasion, she uses red colored and uh, and colorful flowers, and for the morning. Or for the dead people, she uses a white flower, a flower indicating uh, the mourn or the sorrows of the people. So thus, by the end of the poem, when we uh, went through all the lines of the poem, all the stanzas of the poem, and from here we understand that Sarojini Naidu, the poet of the uh, poem, she wanted to convey a certain message that, or she wanted to represent uh, the Indian market here. Okay, in this poem, she wanted to represent the Indian market and to give us a sense, uh, a sense of rich or rich Indian heritage. Okay, that our Indian heritage or our Indian um, products are way better than the foreign goods or merchandises. And in this for this poem, it was her protest against the European products or merchandises and and an appreciation for our Indian products. She wanted to. Uh, convey a message that um, compared to the European goods or products, our Indian products are way better. And then this point it also acts as a protest against the British or the European products uh, during that time. So the point ends here, and with this we are clear with the message that uh, that the point wanted us to wanted to convey us wanted us to know about uh, the Indian bazaars. And then and also she picturizes us or she gives us a visual that how the Indian bazaars, especially about the Hyderabad or uh, any parts of India, how the bazaars work or how is a bazaar in the Indian country. Stay home, stay safe, do it for yourself, do it for your family, do it for India. Let's break the chain.